Good morning. Very glad to um, be with you this day, and uh, looks like it's going to be a sunny one at least for a while, so we uh, praise God for that. As we begin a new church year, we look forward this day to the coming of, of Christ in Bethlehem as a small child, but as I said, we look forward this day. So uh, that is our theme for the season of Advent, as always, looking forward and uh, waiting for God's promise to be fulfilled. So I pray God's blessing upon your worship as you hear the words of Jesus this day. Also, uh, just to mention to you that Steve Mackey's son, Steve, is able to be with us this day and his family. And uh, one of his children, young Gavin, will be uh, baptized this day so uh, we will welcome him into our church membership and uh, we're real grateful for that, of God's blessing to be placed upon him. Uh, the sacrament of baptism and the sacrament of Holy Communion then will be celebrated this day. And as we celebrate Holy Communion, uh, we will do so at the floor level this morning instead of kneeling at the rail Why we will come up in a continuous manner as we uh, receive communion. I have no um, other announcements except to announce that Alan Hughes will be in our prayers. Uh, it's been requested. Uh, he will have uh, surgery uh, after a fall, was it? Uh, yeah. And um, so we pray for blessing for him. And I don't know if there are other announcements that need to be made. Oh, okay. Today. Today, two to four. Okay. Heritage Park. Yes, very good. Steve? Um, well, this month, our son's going to be deployed to Afghanistan again. So we have to keep him in prayer. We will do that, and uh, as well as uh, his children and uh, his wife, Christina, we are uh, grateful for what you do for us and the sacrifices that you make, so uh, we will remember you in our prayers. Any others? Yes. Very good. Okay. Yes, Mary. I need to see all the mustard seeds briefly after church, maybe in the back of the church. Um, also, we are looking for choir members to sing on Christmas Eve. We tentatively have the practice date set up for the next three Thursdays in December, but we really we don't know how many people are interested in singing. If you could see Jen or I after the service today, just Very good. Yes. For his father? His father is dying. He's laying in the hospital. So it wasn't a very thankful. No. Oh. Do, do you know the point where I was laying? Do you know the Okay. We'll 
refer to him as Alan's father, and I know God will sort that out. <laughs> yes, James? Well, may God bless your worship. We begin our worship as we hear the prelude.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. You call all nations to walk in your light and to seek your ways of justice and peace. For the night is past and the dawn of your coming is near. Bless us as we light the first candle of this wreath. Rouse us from sleep so that we may be ready to greet our Lord when he comes and welcome him into our hearts and homes, for he is our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Jesus, and come. By your merciful protection, save us from the threatening dangers of our sins and enlighten our walk in the way of your salvation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All nations shall stream to it. Many people will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall come instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. 
Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war no more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. We will intone Psalm 122 with tone number five. A reading from Romans. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we were baptized. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake 
and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Christ. I'd like to ask the children to come forward for a brief children's message. Just have a seat there somewhere. Watch him. Careful of the little flagon there, pitcher of water that we have. Very good. Okay. Well, this is a good group. I know one in this group, at least one, has a birthday today. Who's that? All right. And you are how old? Ten, okay. I just had a granddaughter yesterday who had a birthday. She's nine, so okay. You're ten. Shall we say happy birthday? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Who was singing Cha Cha Cha? <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> At least you admit it, that's good. I don't know if many of you know the Alleluia chorus, but when I was in high school, there was always a girl who sat in the alto, alto section, and whenever we'd come to the very end of the Alleluia chorus, we'd get, there was a big pause, and she'd always say, Cha Cha Cha, and we'd <laughs> sing. And even when she didn't say it, you still listened for it. You knew it was there. It had to be. That's good. There's something different in church today. Do you notice what it might be? What do you see? The candles. Okay. Yeah. And what's under the candles? All right. Okay. Okay. And there's still something else different that we haven't seen for a while anyway. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> different colors. Okay, there are blue, but we call them paraments on the altar and and uh, so and on the pulpit. Anything else? Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. This is something I will use later when we have the baptism of Gavin. It's your brother. Okay. The baptism of Gavin, your brother. And what's it shaped like? It's shaped like a shell. It's shaped like a shell. And a shell-shaped uh, symbol like this is a symbol for baptism. So I will use this as we baptize Gavin, your brother. Don't really do it that often. No. A person is generally baptized once in their life. And this is the time for Gavin. Well, when you look at the candles up here, it reminds you that what's coming? Christmas. Yes. Christmas. Okay. And then... Also, the greenery that's around the candles that, you know, makes it look a little bit more Christmassy. We don't see any Christmas. How many of you have your Christmas decorations at home up? Not <laughs> everybody. Well, okay. <laughs> we don't have all the decorations up in church yet for a reason, and that reason is when we come to church, we listen for a message that tells us to wait, to, to be awake and watchful, but to wait. And so that's what we are doing as we hear the scriptures today. We know Jesus is coming. We know Christmas is coming. But we're trying to wait. 
It's like having a bunch of Tootsie Rolls on the table. And your mother says, no eating candy until you eat, right? Like, yeah. And so, what? So you eat like healthy food, that's right. Okay, so you got to wait with the Tootsie Rolls. And so, uh, which is hard for me, but I like Tootsie Rolls. You hate them. All right. Next Halloween, you give me all your Tootsie Rolls. Right? I'm just kidding. Oh. We have a kidder up here, don't we? All right. Well, they aren't good if you've got fillings in your teeth, that's for sure. They not they'll take the fillings right out. Anyway. That's pretty good. Grandma <laughs> Grandma can just take her teeth out and brush. Her. Okay, that's very good. I ought to get on with this thing. We don't, uh, what we're doing is waiting for Christmas. We're waiting and we're trying to exercise ourselves, exercise ourselves to learn how to wait. Like when you're in school and you see the clock ticking and you know it recess is coming but it's ticking too slowly You've got to learn to wait, and that's hard, isn't it? So we are waiting, and we know that someday Jesus will come again. Just as he came as a little baby, he will come again. Why do we know that? Because God promised it to us. That's why it's worth the wait. God promised it to us. So whatever we can do to exercise... What? You just said that twice. Yeah, I did say it twice, didn't I? <laughs> you know why? Because when people speak in front of other people like this, it's always helpful to say things at least twice, sometimes three times. <coughs> That's right, you were listening. <laughs> well, we're My grateful that Je <laughs> we're grateful that Jesus came once and he's going to come again. There, I said it three times. Well, let's have a prayer and we'll ask Jesus to come soon. Dear Jesus, thank you for coming to our world once. We pray, of course, that you will help us to wait until you come again, for we know that at that time all things will be made well for us because of your love for us. We ask it in your name. Amen. Thank you for coming up and being good listeners. Happy birthday. Thank you. Grace and mercy and peace be unto you from God our Father. From our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. When I went through a college or seminary, there was a class being taught called Church and Church and Society. Uh, I don't remember whether I took that class or not because it's been a long time ago. But I do know that the Church and Society course that was offered in those days was something that is probably much, much different from such a class that would be offered in a seminary course today. Our society and our church has changed just so much that it's difficult to uh, even imagine back in the 60s what kind of uh, references would be made to our churches and, and to the society in which we live today. It would be very difficult to understand. It was a different kind of age, a time when I would come to church and I would see most of the men out here with neckties on and their good suits on. I would see uh, the women with perhaps even hats. I remember when I first started the ministry, 
Women wore their hats to church very often. And, of course, it was not only a different dress code that we had for coming to worship or to church, but also a different kind of world in which we live. I don't mind seeing you sitting here without ties and hats. That's fine. Uh, I just make mention of that because you can imagine how things have changed so in our world. And St. Paul talks about the church today. Uh, I would think that a new pastor who will be coming to fill your pulpit in the months ahead when you uh, uh, go through the call process, that new pastor will have taken a course that is much more update about church and society. Uh, much more update than the one, of course, that I would have taken. But we live in what, well, social scientists refer to as postmodern times. In fact, they may even say that we've moved on from postmodern times. And the only thing that I know uh, that that phrase means, the only way I can remember what it means uh, to me whenever I hear it, is that everybody, everything, becomes their own authority. You know what's right for you, and that's the way it's going to be. And somebody else knows what's right for them, and that's the way it's going to be. Never mind worrying about what the church says, or what the government says, or what the politician says, or whoever else may be an authority at that time, you are your own authority. And so it goes that in our life we find that these, these uh, ways of thinking, or this way of thinking, increases the... Uh, the change, you might say, that both our church and our society has to um, uh, find and has to live through. When I was a young child, I was an only child, and if I didn't have somebody to uh, go play ball with during the day, why, I'd uh, help my mother hang clothes up on the clothesline on Monday morning. She taught me how to hang a shirt properly on the clothesline, and she taught me how to hang other things properly on the clothesline. Of course, she really wanted me to string the clothesline for her because that was kind of hard for her. But uh, I would do those things, and then when she was finished hanging the clothes, she and the neighbor lady would lean on the fence like this. And they'd, they'd be talking, and they'd talk about all of the different things going on around in the neighborhood. The neighbor lady and their family, they were Catholic, and uh, I remember occasionally the neighbor lady would bring something up that was in the church or that the church was telling them to do, and uh, she would say, well, I don't care what the Pope says. I'm going to do this anyway, you know. Uh, but she didn't. I mean, they, they still followed the teachings of their church. They still had meatless Fridays. They still... Uh, did not eat anything on a Sunday morning until they got to church because communion was to be the first food in their stomach. They still did all of these things because the church was their authority. Today, though, if she would still be alive and she would say to us, well, I'm going to do my own thing no matter what it is the Pope says, well, she might very well do her own thing. It's a different world that we live in. Politically, we can see that as well. One of the political parties might say this, and people will say, well, I'm going to vote the way I want to. And that's a good thing, we usually say. But it is a change from what was uh, in our world previously. The church has kind of lost a bit of influence, some people will say today. Uh, some people will say that, well, when the church spoke, why the community would listen, even our politicians would listen. And we can just uh, very well think of uh, how that's affected our lives and our world today. You remember a time, many of you, when in the middle of the week, especially on a Wednesday, uh, programs in the community, especially school programs, were not scheduled. Why was that? Simply because 
Uh, those nights were set aside for churches to do things with people in their congregations. Uh, Sundays, why one would have never thought of having a sports event, sporting event, uh, scheduled uh, today, of course, and schools will say, well, it's because we have such a, a cram schedule, and they do, I know that. Uh, they will schedule sporting events. Uh, the church can say what it wants, but uh, maybe the community will listen, and maybe it won't. And some people have said, well, we've lost influence as a church in our society. The church would say, these are the problems in an upcoming election that you should consider, and people who consider themselves to be their own authorities will, of course, say, I'm going to do what I want to do. Those are the postmodern times in which we live. The same people who say that, well, the church's influence is waning will also say, well, are we stumbling, stumbling a little bit? Are we uh, losing such influence that we'll no longer make an effect or have an effect on our society and on our world? It's funny that we would think this day of that small tiny baby born in Bethlehem, the one that grew into this man who became our Savior, who died on a cross and who rose again three days later. It's strange that we would consider this man to be the head of this church, which we still function and we still live in, we still uh, are in and which still tries to influence this world because when he was born in Bethlehem, he was such a tiny thing, easily one that people could stumble over. The church came to this world in that little bundle, which we call the baby boy, born in Bethlehem, wrapped in swaddling clothes. That little boy becomes for this world, you might say, not just uh, others, but that little boy becomes such a stumbling block that people cannot see him. They come to worship him, but when they come, they are distracted by so many other things that they can see. They, they can't see the baby down in the manger. And if they don't look out, why they could easily stumble over that little baby and fall down because they won't see him in their midst. We have the obligation as Christ's followers to still see the baby Jesus in our midst, even in the midst of a changing world and in the midst of a society that doesn't look at things the same way it did 50 years ago. We have the obligation to still see that baby Jesus, to look down and to look for him, to watch for him, as we will do throughout this Advent season, hoping that we won't miss what God is trying to say to us this Christmas time. Would we like to have more control in this world as a church? Well, I would say certainly that's the case. Everybody wants to have control of their lives, control of their world. The church doesn't have that much influence, perhaps, as it did 50 years ago. But nevertheless, it doesn't mean that God loves this world any less. He still loves this world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And that hasn't changed. That hasn't changed. As you go through this preparation time for Christmas yourself, maybe uh, you can be reminded of that very familiar passage. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That hasn't changed. That only begotten son will come again. God still loves this world. 
and his church. Amen. may be seated. I'd like to ask the family of Gavin to come forth forward at this time. In holy baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity, and in the waters of baptism we are reborn children of God and inheritors of eternal life. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, which is the body of Christ. And as we live with him and with his people, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. We present Gavin Michael Mackey, the sacrament of holy baptism. Gavin Michael Mackey, do you desire to be baptized? And answer, I do. I do. In Christian love, you have presented Gavin for holy baptism, and you should therefore faithfully bring him to the services of God's house, teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. And as he grows in years, you should place in his hands the scriptures and provide for his instruction in Christian faith. That living in the covenant of his baptism and in communion with the church, he may lead a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ. Do you promise to fulfill these obligations? Then say, I do. In Christian love, you have presented Gavin for holy baptism. You should therefore faithfully care for him and help him in every way as God gives you opportunity that he may bear witness to the faith that we profess and that living in the covenant of his baptism and in communion with the church, he may lead a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ. Do you promise to fulfill these obligations? Then answer, I do. At this time, I'd like to ask the congregation to please rise as we pray for Gavin and for all those who are in need.
In hope and anticipation, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Gather all people into your house, O Lord, and open our eyes to your presence among us. Send us as witnesses that others may see and be drawn to you. Hear us, good Lord, O, o God. Unite our voices to the great song of praise that's sung by mountains and rivers, fields and trees, and join our voices with theirs in announcing your promised coming throughout all creation. Hear us, O God. Transform our tools of war and destruction into instruments for cultivation and growth. Plant peace in places of conflict. Especially, we think this day, of this Afghanistan where Steve will be serving his country. We ask you to hear us, O oh God. <coughs> be attentive to all who wait expectantly for your mercy in times of crisis, illness, fear, and grief. We think especially of Alan Hughes. We think the especially of the father of Alan, who is also near to death, and for all others who cry to you this day, hear us, O God. <laughs> Heal all who live with illnesses that cannot be reversed. Reveal your creative power through those who seek a cure, and give us compassion to bear our neighbor's burdens. Hear us, O oh God. This time we ask that you would look down upon young Gavin as he's received into your church through baptism. And we pray, of course, as you have clothed the saints who have gone before us in the light of Christ, you would teach him and all of us to live in your ways until the great day when you send your Son again to this world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is Almighty God, we entrust you all for whom we pray, confident that you will fulfill your promises through Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we give you thanks for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and you created heaven and earth. By the gift of water you nourish and sustain us and all living things. By the waters of the flood you condemn the wicked and save those, from whom, those whom you had chosen. Noah and his family, you led Israel by the pillar of cloud and fire through the sea out of slavery into the freedom of the promised land. And in the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, your son was set, has set us free from the bondage to sin and death and opened the way to joy and freedom and everlasting life. He made water as a sign to the kingdom and for cleansing and rebirth. And so in obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To you be given praise and honor and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I ask you all now to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. First of all, I ask you, sponsors and parents, do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? Then answer, I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Gavin, Michael, Mackey, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for freeing your sons and daughters from the power of, this, of sin and raising them up to new life in this sacrament. Pour your Holy Spirit upon Gavin, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, spirit of counsel and might, spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Amen. Gavin, Michael Mackey, you have been sealed by the, with the cross of Christ and made his child and heir forever. Let, uh, now let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. We bow our heads for prayer. O oh God, the giver of all life, look with kindness upon the fathers and mother, the father and mother of the, this child. Let them ever rejoice in the gift that you have given them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness for their child, their children, and strengthen them in their own baptism so they may share eternally with their children the salvation you have given them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Through baptism, God has made these new sisters and brothers, or this new, sis, this new brother, a member of the priesthood we share in Christ Jesus, that we may proclaim the praise of God and bear his creative and redeeming word to all the world. So now, we welcome you in the into the Lord's family, Gavin, we receive you as fellow member of the body of Christ, a child of the same heavenly Father, and workers with us in the kingdom of God. Peace be with you. Let's welcome Gavin. Okay. Peace be with you. Okay. okay. Let me also... Uh, Very good.
We'll now, uh, if you will be seated, continue our worship with the offering of our gifts. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, the continued blessings of this world and this life. And for those who are in need, we ask a special measure of grace may be given to them. Use these gifts which we have given to you this day as an offering expressing our love and our concern for those who are loved so by you that you gave your only begotten Son. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to you our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty God and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had supped and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink you all of it. This cup is a New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. We come together now and pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please come now for all is made ready. <coughs>
Now may the holy body and precious blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in true faith to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. O God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Serve the Lord. <laughs>